Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever this may find you. Today, I want to talk to you about a topic that anybody and everybody can relate to, and that is love. And one thing that I've pondered recently is, and does our love for others reflect the love that God has for you? I recently wrote this down, and it's something that's been on my heart, my mind, for quite some time. When you love a person, your attitude should be that you are there to support them, help them, and be there for them through the good times and the bad times. Your love can be a difference maker in someone's life. This isn't just limited to romantic love. It applies to your family and friends too. Loving someone means you want the best for them, even if it's not the best thing for you. If you are loved, make sure you open your heart and mind to it. See it, hear it, and feel it. Know that someone out there loves you and wants to help you be the best version of you. That's what love has always meant to me. There are several things I want to ponder when it comes to love. A couple points I want to make. First one is, we know that God's love is great for all of us, but how great is our love for the people in our lives? And the reason I ask that question, and it actually kind of ties in with my last message about friendship and putting conditions on our friendships and relationships. I feel like oftentimes nowadays, we don't love someone unless their ideals, their beliefs, and their decisions align with our own. And, you know, it's okay to love someone that is different from you. It is very okay. Look at what Jesus did. Look at all the people he loved. He loved the sinners. He loved the sick. He loved the outcasts. He loved the adulterers. He loved the tax collectors. He even loved the Romans. And so it is okay to love others that are different from us. And it says it best in 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Three things will last forever. Faith hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And love should always conquer all. The second point I want to make is God loves us unconditionally despite our flaws and imperfections. That's what makes his love for us so great. So the question I have to ask you is what conditions have you put on love? And again, it goes back to, are you only loving like-minded people? Or are you loving people that are different from you as well? When you love someone, they should be allowed to be themselves around you without the fear of judgment, criticism, or the fear of not being loved by you because they share a different opinion or a different viewpoint than you. Again, look at Jesus' example of love and how the Pharisees and Sadducees and religious leaders treated him. They may have not loved him, but I have no doubt that Jesus loved the religious leaders. It even says it best in First John 416. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. So really take some time and think about it. Are you only loving like-minded people who think and believe and live their life the same way as you do? Or are you loving 
people that are different from you because you want to love them. You want to be around them. You want to show them kindness and support and encouragement and uplift them, even though they might be different from you. The third point I want to make is that God showed his great love for us through Jesus. I mean, there is no greater love than to lay down your life so our sins can be forgiven. I mean, what is the most famous verse in the Bible? John 3.16 For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only Son to die, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish and have eternal life. That's how great God's love for us. How great is our love for others? My final point on this is that your love for others should reflect God's great love for you. Love is meant to be completely unconditional. Think about the people in your life. Think about the friends, family, even co-workers you may have. Do you love them even though they might be different? Do you love them despite their flaws and imperfections? Do you want to sacrifice love to try and prove that you're right? Because 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7 says it best, and everybody knows this passage, or at least I hope they do. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It will always protect, always trust, and always hope, and always perseveres. That, to me, is complete and unconditional love. So, again, the four points I laid out for you today is that we know God's love is great for all of us, but how great is our love for the people in our lives? God loves us unconditionally, despite our flaws and imperfections. That's what makes his love for us so great. What conditions have you put on love? God showed his love for us through Jesus. And your love for others should reflect God's great love for you. Love is meant to be completely unconditional. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just ask you to open our hearts and open our minds to loving those who are different from us. We're all imperfect. We all have flaws. Not one of us is the same. But so many times we find ourselves only loving like-minded people. It is okay to love those who are different from us. It is okay to love people who have flaws, imperfections, and it's okay to love people who make mistakes. Lord, you even tell us to love our enemies as well. So Lord, I just ask you that you open the hearts and the minds of people who listen to this and just people in our society in general, that they may love others who are different from them unconditionally. I lift all this up in your name. Praise be to Jesus. Amen.